Welcome back to another live stream with us at Global Money Academy. Today we are going to look at overvalued or undervalued stocks, Justin. Where do I get overvalued? Yeah. So no, definitely not overvalued. Undervalued <laughs> in an overvalued market. So yes, we are going to look at some of the stocks that Justin found, um, two of them, and then we will also look at two of the stocks that I found that I believe is undervalued. So yes, today is going to be very exciting. Justin, I've got no idea what you chose and you, I don't think you have any idea what I chose. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably Chinese stocks again. <laughs> if that's my best <laughs> guess. <laughs> no, I wanted to make it a bit exciting. So I decided okay, I'm, I'm done covering the Chinese stocks. I think I've said enough. I've, I've said whatever I need to say about the Chinese stocks. And by the way, they are up. So my eToro portfolio is actually in the positive now. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and I just like to remind everybody when it comes to investing, it's only a loss if you sell and it's only profit if you sell. <laughs> Until then, it's invested equity. So let's not kid ourselves. Eh? 100%. So Justin, where shall we start today? With you or well, with me? Well, Davi, I think, uh, yeah, we can start with me before we jump into my actual stock sheet. Um, I'm actually surprised to find that there's still a lot of really good deals in the market. And uh, it just goes to prove even in an overvalued market, if you're prepared to dig deep enough, there's still some good, good buys out there. And uh, it's very interesting to me, Davi, that uh, there's actually some really good names that I'm finding over the last over the last while. You know, stocks that you just wouldn't expect to be going on sale. And uh, a lot of it, of course, has to do with sentiment. And this is what we always talk about in the market. You know, sentiment is often very irrational when it comes to to stocks. And the great thing is. For people who are prepared to do their fundamental analysis, there are great deals to be had. All you have to do is you've got to dig a little bit deeper and go and have a look for those bargains. So, Davi, the first stock I've got today, I think you're going to be pretty surprised by it. And it's a stock, it's a company which I think everybody knows, and that is Logitech. Ah, uh, okay. Now, Logitech, of course, trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker LOGI. And uh, if you guys want to go and do some additional fundamental research on it, feel free to. David does have a very, very small uh, dividend yield on the stock. Um, and we can actually see that the stock price has been going up. I mean, they've had a little bit of a dip off here of late. But I mean, generally, from, t from sort of like early part of 2020 right through till, you know, this pretty much August, the price has been going up steadily. And even despite that price increase, you're going to see that this stock is highly highly undervalued um so taking a look that's, at that's the, funny uh, it's, it's, that's the exact kind of trend we've been seeing with the technology stocks a absolutely so just having a look first of all at the market cap davi i mean this is a big cap stock 17 billion right uh the share price <laughs> 10 years ago 968 currently trading at 102.42 can you actually believe that davi 968 to 102.42 in the space of 10 years. That's pretty phenomenal, right? And look at this, Davi. P ratio, 17.09. So it's well within that shooting range that we want. We're looking for, we, we're normally looking for a P ratio below 25 to make sure we're not overpaying, right? And uh, they've got healthy profit margin at 18.4%. They've got net equity at 1.4 billion. Equity to market cap is 8.61. Uh, the dividend yield is 0.82. The payout ratio for the dividend very, very much within uh, within the shooting range of what we're looking for, uh, twenty one percent. So they're not overcommitted on their dividend payment, and then of course, even after a very healthy free cash flow of one point one billion, they still have nine hundred ninety four million left after paying that dividend. That's pretty phenomenal, eh? Yes, definitely. So then coming down and looking at the year on years, David, it's not often you see this in an undervalued stock. So revenue in the right direction, three years in a row. Gross profit in the right direction, three years in a row. Operating income, net income from continued operations, all in the correct uh, sort of trajectory that we're looking for. And of course, the only two that really are hampered in terms of the revenue figures is if we go back here on the two year, and we can see here that they had not really too much of a backwards movement. I'd call it more of a sideways movement if you look at these figures. But generally speaking, I mean, Davi, this is a golden stock having a look at it. And uh, I mean, if we look at these total revenues, look at this. We've gone from 2.5 billion up to 5.7 billion uh, a in a matter jump. of three years. That's a huge jump. Have a look at gross profit, Davi. Gross profit from 909 
million to 2.5 billion. That is a big, big leap forward. And you're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you. Investors have been selling the stock off. Really? And I'm going to go into some reasons why. But I mean, looking at these numbers, it's just it 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 is beyond belief to me that people are not seeing the value in Logitech. And then, uh, of course, if we have a look at uh, if we have a look at equity, Davi, we can see the equity has moved up fairly nicely over the last uh, over the last few years. They've obviously had a little bit of a sideways movement here. They would have got a full. Uh, green scorecard over here if it wasn't just for a little bit of a sideways movement here but we can see this this stock is really doing great things i mean on the face of it this is a really good stock and this brings us to the 12 point checklist davi this is going to surprise the hell out of you share price we've got momentum it's doubled since uh, since inception or the 10 year p ratio is within that shooting range between 1 and 25 they got profit margin in excess of 10 percent they have positive net equity and they do have a dividend, and the dividend cost is less than free cash flow. Number of shares have not uh, been diluted, so we're giving them a check mark there. Uh, total revenue has been going up year on year. Gross profit has been going up year on year. Operating income has been going up year on year. And net income from continued operations has been going up year on year. The only two places where we're marking them down is on the operating cash flow and on the free cash flow. And it is purely because of that little slip, which happened, you know, that, that little slip happened pretty much two years ago. And ever since then, they've been on the right path. So Davi, check this out. Fundamentals, 83% positive. 83% positive on the fundamentals. Only 16% of the criteria not being met. Now, the industry median price target for this is sitting at 120.72 but get this Darby this is going to shock the hell out of you return on equity 53 return on asset 23 return on invested capital 328 percent yeah that's massive eh? very 328 percent and of course that net no. income from continued operations represents 18 percent of total revenue so that's pretty healthy as well now, what's the reason people are selling off if it's doing that well then? So I'm going to come to that in a second. But personally, I think, Davi, the, the analysts have got it wrong at 120.72. If I look at these key factors here, if I look at the earnings per share reports, I think they're going to hit 135 in the next 12 months. And there's a, there's a big reason why, and I'll come to that in a little bit of the off-book factors. But that's going to represent about 32 bucks per share. In other words, 31% potential gain in the stock so this is the kind of stock where i look at it and i go 31 percent. the fundamentals are solid they've got year on year growth in all the key factors that i'm looking at this is a pretty this is a pretty low risk investment as far as i'm concerned in terms of putting my capital into this and knowing even if i make a 15 percent return i've still done pretty well yes so let's talk about some of the factors that are driving this, this investor sell -off. So I'm actually going to head over to Motley Fool, which, by the way, I don't often talk about Motley Fool. I don't really read Motley, Motley Fool much. I think they've got some interesting stuff. But for the most part, I think there's a lot of hype in the content they put out. But I think with this article, they pretty much hit it spot on. And they're talking about why you should be buying this growth stock hand over fist. This was published on the 4th of August, by the way. And the price was actually a little bit higher on the 4th of August. So with a lower price, I mean, they've got to be losing their minds at the moment. So no, it's because of, the, because of the earnings. Because of the earnings reports. And, you know, Logitech International obviously completely, as they say, crashed expectations. But investors sold off because it didn't raise the guidance on what they were expecting. There was obviously higher, higher projections out for what their growth would be. Um, the other thing is that the near-term uh, near performance uh, might take a hit uh, because of tough comparisons that are going on in the market right now. But there's something else that Logitech is doing at the moment, which I think is a big play, Darby. And this is something that nobody's talking about. I haven't heard about it anyway. Um, Logitech is actually bringing out a new wireless Bluetooth technology for their wireless devices. So as we all know, they do mice and they do all sorts of wireless in devices. So they've got this new protocol coming out called the Logi protocol. And the Logi protocol is basically a brand new protocol, which is, it's going to completely change the way our devices interface with our computers. So Bluetooth and wireless and everything is going to be challenged a little bit by this 
by this this protocol that they're bringing out. And I think that could have a huge impact. And listen, Logitech has been heavily invested in this for a number of years. They've been doing a lot of work on it. And uh, in fact, they've just released a new wireless mouse in India that has this technology on it as a trial run. Um, and it's going to be very interesting to see because if it gets widely adopted, of course, the big money spinner for them is licensing because they're going to be licensing that technology out to other manufacturers. And that could be a massive, massive money generator for them. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I also didn't know about that. No, I, I had no idea. I mean, I was really digging deep to figure out exactly what's going on. But I mean, check this out. Uh, Logitech's Q1 revenue jumped 58% year over year, okay? Uh, that went up to 1.131 billion, okay? Non-gap uh, earnings went up 91% to 122 per share. I mean, it's, it's just, it's nothing but increases here. I cannot believe that investors have sold off on this, on this stock. Do you think the impressive growth is also because so many people are working from home? Because, I mean, we've seen that with a lot of um, like computer related stocks, you know. Interestingly enough, uh, the webcams is responsible for the least biggest portion of their growth in the last two years. So if, 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 if that were the case, I would say that webcams would have been the big driver. But I think it has a lot more to do with the fact that People are in a cycle buying computer equipment at the moment. You know, uh, computer prices are at an all-time low, generally speaking. People are people are, are adding devices all the time. I mean, just think about your own personal consumer behavior at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we we all buying computer equipment constantly, and they're benefiting from that. You know. Yes. No. Of course. And uh, of course, the other thing that that is a big uh, discussion point at the moment mm -hmm. is, of course, that Logitech is also very focused right now on the B two B channel. So very much they've been focused on the B two C channel, which is business to consumer, right? The retail, typical retail buyer. But they're starting to develop a lot of technology, and a lot of it has to do with these Logi protocols that they're developing. Um, they're developing a lot of. Uh, enterprise infrastructure and i think that also is going to be a huge catalyst for growth going forward so i'm going to tell you uh, i don't see any reason not to buy logitech i actually don't even see a reason to go looking for a discount at this point um <laughs> because with a potential gain of 30 percent, even if you only get half of that that is your margin of safety no of course it looks very interesting i'm definitely going to look, going to look into that in a bit more detail before we go ahead yeah, i just look, want to check out something's um, wrong here with these comments look at this <laughs> it's super large. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can adjust this before we go ahead. So just uh, while while Dov is busy there on uh, on the comment section, we actually use a platform called Ecam Live. It's basically a streaming platform. Davi controls it from his side, and we've been in long discussions over the last couple ah. of days about getting a producer in to produce the show for us, so that Davi and I can really concentrate on the content because every once in a while. You'll see Darwin and I fiddling around a little bit technically, and it's not really our area of expertise. So we are looking for a producer for our show. So if any of you have any producers that you know that would like to do remote production work, uh, anybody who might be interested in producing our show and taking it a little bit further, let us know. Hit us up. You can get me on email, um, and you can also uh, get us in uh, Facebook and, of course, Instagram and Twitter. Um, yeah, I think uh, Darby Logitech is a great stock to look at. Like I said, I've done a lot of digging around the stock today. I really couldn't find any flaws other than I think investors were selling off early for profit purely based on the premise that the earnings report weren't, wasn't quite what they wanted. But the fact of the yeah, matter I mean, is it was still a really good earnings report. We see that happening very often, you know. Justin, maybe if you can just go to the website and um, it's MHB. Also, we have a course um, where they can learn to value stocks. So, yes, we do have a course and it's absolutely free of charge. You don't have to pay for it. So, if you want access to the course, just go to our homepage, Global Money Academy. There you'll see stock investing. Um, you can just sign up, create your profile, and then you can go through the course absolutely free of charge. So, definitely go check that out. Les says he'll get And there's no tricks, by the way. <laughs> there's no, no, no tricks. Patreon to join. <laughs> Somebody asked me the other day, what's the trick? I said, there's no trick. We actually, we made a deal when we hit 10,000 subscribers. We're going to give all of our courses away for free. Um, it's, it's, it's not really our thing, um, you know, charging for courses. So, yeah, I mean, obviously in the initial stages when we developed our courses, we had 
a group of uh, 10 people that we were mentoring, that we were helping uh, figure out how to manage the money and how to invest. And uh, that's pretty much how our courses were built. So Davi and I definitely have to revisit our courses in the future and add some new content and definitely level things up a little bit. But there's great content in there. There is hours and hours and hours worth of video content in there. So Davi, before we go to my second stock, let's jump to one of your stocks. I'm really excited to see what you've got on the table. Okay, I think you've got to be surprised by this one. Is it Chinese? Be no, it's Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even believe it. Will like that. I, I was tempted to bring up Baidu, but no, I didn't. So, <laughs> no, today you are not going to see any Chinese stocks from me. So, today we're actually looking at a gold miner. And this is actually a gold miner from Canada. Now, Justin, we've reviewed a lot of gold miners on this channel. We've reviewed Kinross, which is actually also Canadian, I believe. And then we yeah. have reviewed, um, we've looked at Barrick as well. But yeah. this one, the re I'm going to show you the reason why I like this one more. And um, apart yeah. from the fundamentals, I want to show you something. So this is the cost to produce gold per ounce. And have a look at this. It costs them $788 to produce an ounce of gold. Kinross is sitting at 800, 987. So that means that if the price of gold goes down to below 900, then Kinross starts making a loss. And the same, yeah. same with Barrick. But B2 Gold still and Polyus and a few other ones are actually still making money if, even if the price of gold goes down. So I see that as a pretty, pretty big margin of safety. And uh, yes, okay, so I brought, I brought that up um, already. So now I want to show you the stock price quickly. And if you zoom so out, just a question, five, just a question quickly. Why is the cost of production so much cheaper for B2 Gold? Well, it's because of the mindset they have, of, of course. So it's probably just easier for them to produce gold. So it all depends okay. on the mine and obviously, um, yes, the internal procedures they've got going as well. But mostly, mostly the mine, you know. So if you've got a good mine, um, where, where it's pretty much easier to to um, you know, to reduce gold, then obviously it works out better for you. Let me just, I don't believe this. I bought B2 Gold. I don't know much about it. I got it from an old Sven review. Oh, okay. I don't even know that Sven actually um, covered this one. Um, apparently Canadian monies have no shame in digging up your content. <laughs> hey, there's a lot, of a lot of countries having no shame digging up our continent here in Africa. Eh? Just ask the British. So... Have a look well, at this, actually, Justin. Actually, actually, the Chinese have taken over from the British. Oh, they yes, of course. They moved from uh, rice paddies to uh, the African plains, and they are obliterating our continent. But anyway, we won't get into that today. Yeah, that can be a long discussion. But anyway, as you guys know, like Kinross, Barrick, all these guys, they basically follow the price of gold. And if I can illustrate that to you, if I zoom out on a five year, this is, I hope this is five years. Because I had to readjust my screen, this thing looks a little bit weird. So let me readjust it a little bit again. So as you can see, that is the price of gold zooming out five years. This is the price of B2G, uh, B2 gold, and that's also five years. So looks very similar, right? Yeah. So yes, so that is why I chose this one. But now I want to dig into the fundamentals, and I want to show you what the fundamentals looks like. So let me bring this up. So... The By the way, ratio, Kinross is also quite uh, undervalued at the moment, eh? Well, Kinross also have good, under, uh, good fundamentals, but the reason I chose this one is because of the production of gold. It's um, cheaper for them to actually produce the gold, which means more cash flows yeah. and more revenue for them, which is why I chose Makes this sense. one. But um, dividend yield, very good dividend yield, sitting at 4.1 at the moment. And then um, the P.E. ratios sitting at 7.1 versus 109. But that's no surprise. I mean, in the pandemic, gold went up all the way to what? I think just above 2000. But then yeah. the price to book sitting at 1.5. It's pretty much overvalued on all these multiples if you look at it. Then look at yeah. the revenue, you will also see the same picture. You know, when gold goes up, then the revenues for these, these guys also go up. Earnings per share, same thing. And then the return on equity, we also see the same thing. It's pretty much follows the price of gold. When gold goes up, revenues and all the other metrics goes up along with that. But look at these um, gross margins, Justin. Pretty good, eh? 35% yeah. on net margin. And then operating cash flows and free cash flows also growing. And then current ratio also very well capitalized, sitting at 4.3. Debt to equity, very low, basically sitting at zero. 
then shares outstanding it's pretty much flat over the last four years but then have a look at the 10 point checklist here so if you look at the revenues you see it's been growing by 27.6 now once again comes back to gold but have a look at the return on equity sitting at 24 percent return on invested capital 22 earnings per share sitting at 74 percent so they basically scored 10 out of 10 for the fundamentals and i said not very often that you actually see that happening you know no. so analyst ratings analysts are also uh, bullish about this stock they are predicting a target of 5.9 don't know exactly how they predict that they must be predicting the price of gold then so I didn't give my fair price because I've got no idea where gold will be going. I think in the short term we will see gold going down a little bit. So I think you can still wait a while before you actually buy some gold stocks. I for one will not be um, buying any gold stock at the moment because well I've got 10% of my portfolio allocation already allocated to gold. So I'm not going to be fiddling around with it. But as I said fundamentals looks absolutely great. And if you take the 12 month target of the analyst, you are basically sitting with an upside of around 35%. So Les says yeah, that he owns Barrick. So Les, I actually also own Barrick and um, I also own another gold miner as well. I don't own um, uh, B2 Gold, but look, when it comes, when price of gold goes up and I have to readjust my portfolio again and change some things around. I think I will definitely buy into this one because I mean the price of gold to produce the price of, or to produce the gold is just so low for them. You know, I mean gold can fall to what eight hundred and these guys will still be in the profit. Yeah, I mean that's 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 pretty that's pretty phenomenal. Um, I think also you know you need to be careful not over investing into any resource based stock because a lot of the resources. Uh, are essentially very cyclical. So yes, very you know, cyclical. Um, I if I do invest into a resource uh, based stock, I normally I normally favour those with strong dividends, um, and that have consistent dividends because those dividends for me will they'll pretty much work through market cycles. Um, and generally speaking, the the companies that I want to retain the investors will continue paying their their, their dividends, and that's factored into their equity. You know, they make sure they've got equity on the table to see them through the lean times. And so that's a nice way for me to average out my portfolio. But <clears throat> I would I would be very hesitant and very cautious about over investing into any heavily driven commodity based um, sector. You know, I think I think you have yes. to spread yourself between the sectors. And diversity really is the key. You know, because what, when when gold moves, you know, silver can do something completely different. When silver moves, gold can do something different. And the same is, is true for oil, and the same is true for iron ore. So. You know, I tend I tend to like companies that are very much um, in in the pipeline business essentially. And when I say pipeline, I don't mean physically the pipeline of you know oil or whatever, but in the transportation, in the delivery, because you often find that they operate across multiple sectors. And for me, those businesses are pretty ideal. Yeah, so I actually found that um, Ray Dalio's approach to it works best for me. So I basically follow his approach, and that is he buys. Um, he allocates ten percent of his portfolio to gold miners, you know, or gold, yeah. whatever yeah. kind of stock it is or EFT it is that he's investing in. But whenever it goes below ten percent, then he starts adding to it again because it means then it's basically undervalued. But when gold yeah. goes up, he starts selling some of the profits in order to, and, and then he keeps it at ten percent. So then you are basically taking advantage of that cyclical cycle and just average in and out, taking the profits all the time. Yeah, and, and Davi, honestly, for most people, I think, you know, instead of trying to choose that one specific gold stock that might necessarily do well, just go and, just go and find yourself an ETF, you know, um, because uh, it, it's it's pretty difficult to do this amount of research, you know, for, for each stock. And I don't think the average investor has the time to go and do that. Yes. So I watched John Paulson big short this afternoon on David Rubenstein's show. He was pretty bullish on gold given the inflation picture. Made me feel warm. So yes, look, um, when inflation goes up, generally go gold goes up with it. But we didn't see that the last time. So it's not always 100%. I was just about to say that. I think we enter into a very, very different market cycle. What we need to appreciate is that there are many more hedges in the market now than purely gold. And, and investors are starting to be a lot smarter. You know, typically the narrative has been your best hedge against inflation is gold. Go and buy gold, go and sit on gold, have a portion of your portfolio in gold. It's a great hedge against inflation. 
But Davi, things are changing a lot. I mean, the monetary policies around the world are being adjusted drastically. Um, inf inflation is a moving target all the time. I mean, you know, th there's just so many variables into it. And exactly like you said, the last market cycle, gold did not exactly fo follow its historical trend, you know. And as much as it pains me to say this, it really pains me to say this. <clears throat> People sought out alternative hedges. And listen, whether we like it or dislike it, there is a couple of trillion dollars sitting in cryptocurrency at the moment because people use crypto as a hedge for inflation. And we cannot write that kind of liquidity out of the market. Well, I, use, I basically use gold as a hedge against currency devaluation, you know, so inflation and currency, devalu uh, currency devaluation. So, I mean, the, the amount of printing going on across the world is just absolutely ridiculous at the moment. So there is a, and we are entering a cycle or the term where usually the, the, the reserve or the world reserve currency gets replaced. You know, it's usually between 80 and 100 years. Historically, it's always been that way. So for all you know, yeah. it might happen. So I just like to have that kind of edge in my portfolio. And that's the reason why I own gold. And historically, that's always what I've been doing. I've been trimming it. It's cyclical, you know, so I've always been doing well with it. And I've always been in the profit over the long term when I take gold. <laughs> yeah, I know for sure. Now, Les gives me so much shit on my on my um, crypto crypto videos. I mean, I, I really am trying so hard to give people uh, a little bit of an alternative view, and and not really the logical investors. It's the illogical investors that we're trying to win over and say to the guys, look, you need to measure some fundamentals. I mean, five thousand three hundred plus projects. There, ninety nine percent of them are absolute crap. But I must tell you, there are some good projects out there. So Justin, I read something very interesting today before we head over to your second stock. So yeah. here in South Africa, what people are doing is um, they are taking their crypto profits and then they're actually buying gold coins. So my thinking around that is they probably want to dodge the tax man. But I think these um, it's SA coin that actually st that, that sells this coin. And I think it was actually pretty clever of them. They, act they, they started accepting cryptocurrency. And obviously, it's working out very well for them. So they say that the millennials and the Gen Z are actually the ones buying these crypto coins or buying these coins the most. And all of them are buying it with their cryptos. So that was pretty interesting. And it's happening in South Africa. It must be happening all around the world. Well, I think, you know, this is something that I don't think anybody's fully wrapped their head around. And I'm certainly not a tax expert, but people need to understand what a taxable event is in terms of investing. And... Uh, you know, I think the, the common perception since uh, the South African Reserve Bank and uh, our tax man has said, look, crypto is going to be taxed and, you know, you're going to get penalized if you don't declare your crypto. Yeah, they can't, they went as far as to say you are going to jail. Like, exactly. So, um, and, and by the way, you, you're not allowed to, any, any money that's on a local crypto exchange, you can't transfer to another crypto exchange outside of South Africa, which, by the way, I'm not going to talk about the loopholes here, but that's just absolutely short-sighted they don't realize how big the loopholes are but that having been said i think what people need to appreciate in that instance davi they're seeing it as they're taking crypto money or money profits they've made whether it was on a stock or whether it was on crypto it doesn't matter and moving it into another asset right hoping to avoid tax but that is for all intents and purposes a taxable event and people need to realize that no exactly but look I, I, I think it's I think it's a dodge the tax man. According to the article, they said uh, it's, it's a store of value. Definitely not. I think I, I don't think the millennials and Gen Zs or Gen Zs are seeing it that way. I think for the older people, yes, um, most likely see it as a store of value, but definitely not millennials. Yeah, no, absolutely. So listen, um, Davi, just a just a little bit of a disclaimer before we jump into this next stock, and I think you're pretty much going to be the same. I haven't been able to do enough off book. Uh, checking on the stock i've pretty much been focusing purely on the on the fundamentals and the financials so guys i'm going to present the fundamentals on the stock to you i definitely recommend you go and have a little bit more of a read through on the business itself um, i had a very brief overview but this is definitely a stock that needs you to dive in a little bit deeper but there is definitely something going on here so davi the stock i don't know if you've heard about them 360 yes. digitech isn't that the, the, don't they do a lot of webcams as well? Correct. Correct. Oh, um, yeah. So quite a diversified business, but uh, there's some interesting things going on with the stock. So let's first talk about the key things. So we've got a market cap here 
of uh, 3.4 billion. Uh, the share price, Davi, on the 10 year was 15.50, currently trading at 22.46. So it hasn't been a huge amount of movement there. But check this out P ratio of, of uh, 4.18, right? So that's pretty low. Uh, profit margin, very healthy at 36.42. Net equity. This is interesting. The net equity is larger than the market cap. You don't see that every single day, right? Yes. Um, and then they have, like I said, it's uh, it's almost threefold their, their market cap. So that's pretty interesting. There's no dividend on the stock. And they do have strong, strong, positive free cash flow. So on the face of it, a very, very interesting stock. Then we come into the year on years. Everything looks good except for... <laughs> Gross profit and operating income. And I haven't been able to dig into this deep enough. I really want to spend some time with the stock over the next week and really dive deep into the books and, and really have a look what's going on. But I have a feeling they're doing a lot of investments. And I have a, I have a feeling they're almost like one of the other stocks that we reviewed the other day. They're taking a lot of investments in a lot of smaller projects and, and, and businesses. And I think this is part of the reason why this gross profit and operating income is not showing. Now, looking at the total revenue, Davi, they've grown massively, 3.7 to 12 billion over the course of three years. That's big growth. Have a look at net income from continued operations, up from 1.1 to 5, and then pretty much the same for free cash flow. In fact, free cash flow, even bigger growth, 276 million to 5.6 billion. That's just exceptional, exceptional growth. And uh, just looking at my score list, I'm going to go through it very quickly. Um, obviously, the share price is one of the things we're looking at that unfortunately hasn't doubled. P ratio is well within shooting range. Profit margin is what we're looking for. They've got positive um, equity and, of course, that dividend, no dividend, so it's less than free cash flow. Then uh, where we're scoring them down, number of shares, there has been a little bit of dilution on the shares. Uh, total revenue hasn't been going up consistently. They've had one or two little gaps. Uh, gross profit has been climbing. Um, the operating income has been climbing, but unfortunately, net income from continued operations, operating cash flow, these ones just a little bit of under pressure. So on the fundamentals, Davi, I've got it scored at 50-50, right? So that's definitely warrants a, a little bit of a deeper look, especially with such a low PE ratio and especially with such high margins. I mean, have a look at these margins, right? We're talking about return on equity at 54%, return on asset uh, 22 and return on invested capital 122. Those are exceptional, exceptional figures. And then, of course, net income from continued operations versus total revenue is 42%. Now, the analysts have this pegged at 40, 50 based purely on the fundamentals. Like I said, I haven't leaned deep enough into the off book factors. I think that that's a fair price projection. I actually think it's more than fair. And, uh, Projection mar margin on this is about 80%. So just on the fundamentals, this is definitely a buy for me. But like I said, I'd like to dig a little bit deeper on this, especially because this is a 50-50. If you look at the fundamentals, there's a couple of gaps in the reporting that I'd like to really figure out in a little bit more detail. But I think this is definitely a stock that warrants a little bit of a deeper look. What exactly is it that they are doing? So I'll take you across their website quickly. It's actually, um, it's one of the ugliest websites I've ever seen. And I've got to say, I think this was done, I, th I think this was done specifically for investors. Um, as you'll see when you see the day, the, the stuff, the stuff that is on there, um, it, it's pretty much all about the investors info. And uh, so let's see if I've got the right one here. Uh, 360 Digitech. Digitech, yeah. Okay, so when you have a look at their website, you'll see what I mean. Ain't the prettiest. Um, but, but one of the things they're talking about um, in, in, their, in their corporate structure is that they're obviously looking at uh, a lot of acquisitions. So I have a feeling this is pretty much one of those, you know, holding companies that's pretty much just buying up other companies in the space. But they're talking about specifically enterprise products and specifically data-driven enter uh, enterprise products to handle risk management between enterprises. So, yeah, like I said, Davi, I need to do a little bit of a deeper dive into the stock. Um, I need to be, do a little bit of a deeper dive into the company. I had a quick look at the SEC filings. There wasn't too much I could pick up from that. But like I said, I really need to actually look at, this, at the stock a lot closer. Is that a Chinese company? See, it, oh, it looks like Chinese... I 
it it looks it looks like a Chinese company that bought a spec. <laughs> so you are actually covering the covering the Chinese companies today. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> So, so, here, so here they're stating that the company offers standardized risk management services in the form of uh, software as a service at enterprise level uh, for institutional clients. So again, I mean, that's wonderful wording, but I need to figure out what the hell they actually do before I put any money into them. Open up that presentation quickly. See on the right hand side. Uh, no, no, up, up, up. Uh, yes, their presentations at the right, right column. Oh yeah, over here, the investor presentations. <clears throat> You'll quickly get a feel of what's going on there. No, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, so they're it's just like talking about... Some... They're just it, talking yes, about, yeah. about the businesses they service, but I haven't got any firm <laughs> handle on what it is that they actually do. So Les thinks he probably owns it. <laughs> it is EFT. ETF. <laughs> but look, I mean, they've got incredible fundamentals. So like I said, I, this is a bonus stock. I didn't actually intend to present it today. Um, Davi put me on a little bit of pressure towards the end of the day. I actually wanted to sit with the stock for at least another week and just really research it. But uh, I definitely, definitely am going to be looking to So I'll keep you guys updated and, uh, and give you guys a little bit of feedback as I go through this a bit more. Yeah, Anderson wants to turn you into a China bull. No, listen. I mean, I've been I've been called crypto bull. I've been called iron ore bull. I've been called uh, I've been called a lot of things. Um, but I, but I'll tell you one thing. Um, I'm probably the least bullish person you'll ever meet in investing. I am such a pessimist when it comes to investing. I always I always assume the worst when I look at every single stock. And that and that's part of the reason why I said like I I put a little bit of a disclaimer before I presented the stock. So listen, guys, I haven't dug deep enough into this because I really for me I mean you guys know this from having watched this channel. I need to understand the business. I'm not going to invest into any stock. If I don't understand the fundamental business, I don't care how great the fundamentals are. I need to understand the business. It's just, it's my, it's it's my it's my obsessive compulsive disorder from having run businesses that I need to understand the business. So shall we run into my my second stock? So are you are you on the, the same footing as me? You didn't do enough research on it to to be able to present it. I'll give my disclaimer as I get to it. But there's definitely some okay. more research to be uh, to be done. But this is going to okay. surprise you. I bet it's going to do. Okay, have a look let's at have this. a look. So the stock I'm covering is Smith and Wesson Brands, a firearms wow. and ammunition manufacturer. Whoa, 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 whoa! The only thing I love more than vehicles, and women, and boats, and airplanes, is guns. I <laughs> love guns. <laughs> I own, so, uh, no jokes. I own, I own about I own about twelve rifles, and Davi, six of them are Smith and Weston. <laughs> so I also own a rifle, and that's why I also kind of love this stock, you know. But Justin, this will surprise you. So you see the run up here, from twenty twenty up to today, two hundred thirty seven percent up. Do you know why? Well, tell me. Apparently, because of the pandemic. And because of the politics going on in the USA, all the US guys went and they just started buying up guns. So it's up like more than 130% because it started off with the pandemic. I went and looked at the, at the gun sales and it just shot up like more than almost yeah, about 50%. And then in some places like 100%. So I guess people in the US thought that, listen here, the pandemic is upon us and we need to kill some people here or we, at least we need to be armed. And they're going to shoot the virus. <laughs> <and that. laughs> So that was really surprising, you know. I mean, us South Africans also like our guns, but I, I didn't see that trend happening over here. I think it's because our regulations are a lot more tougher when it comes to actually getting the licenses for the guns. But then the second it's actually one 12 was... actually 12 to 14 months to get a gun license here. Yeah? In the States, you can walk in with pretty much a clean bill of health and, and get some milk and a handgun at the same time, mm -hmm. you know. So the second reason was of the, the cause of the elections and the Democrats taking the seat, you know. Uh, apparently, that's that also fueled the gun sales. <laughs> apparently, historically, when um, when Republicans win, then gun sales goes up. I've got no idea why. 
<laughs> um, yeah, you guys in the US, please leave a comment and explain this to us. As you can see, we are from South Africa. We definitely don't understand that. And that's why I say... No, no, I, d I, I understand it. I understand it. When you've, when you've got people like Biden who've come into power on the liberal ticket, right? Trump's, Trump's oaks down in Texas are going, listen, the world's lost their freaking mind. Uh, they're injecting babies into us with this vaccine. There's all kinds of weird crap happening. We've got to arm ourselves to the hilt and make sure that when those liberals come over the hill, that we can shoot the shit out of them. So that is basically my disclaimer. I don't know if growth will continue. And that's something I will need to look into more because obviously I don't really understand this, you know. But So I read an article here that where they said that basically in 2020, 2021, the gun sales still um, keeps going strong, you know. So it says here, let me, so it may be too early to know if 2021 sales of firearms will top last year's 20, uh, 20, 22.8 million, but a number of factors from the COVID-19 pandemic and the election of Joe Biden played no small part. In fact, as Pre President Biden calls for more gun control, that could further increase sales. A final consideration is that there's only so much supply and while last year many, many would-be gun owners bought anything that was available, consumers now may be a little more selective. So they, what they are basically saying is the more Biden talks about yeah, controlling the guns and gun control, they might be seeing sales go up even more, you know. So that is pretty interesting and that's basically my disclaimer. I don't know what's going to happen with the actual gun sales in the US if it's going to continue to run strong. So yes, I've got no idea, but you must see the stock. It actually looks pretty impressive. So something else that I picked up as well, they actually had a spin-off in the company in 2020, which was very surprising. So they had a, a big range of outdoor gear and they basically did a spin-off and took the outdoor gear and, and that's now under a new stock symbol. And they are now okay. only focusing on their firearms and their ammunition. So they are very much focused right now. And they, that's where that's also what you will see once we start digging into the numbers here. But have a look at this. PE ratio sitting at 5.5 versus 48, um, 45.8 in the last five years. And have a look at this price to cash flow and price to free cash flow. Sitting at 4.53. So that's just absolutely insane. Oh, Anderson yes. actually gave us, and Anderson's actually also from South Africa. It's because of the fear that Dems will finally go after gun control. So yes, exactly that. They say that um, if the Democrats goes after gun control, then they will probably see it go, um, yeah, rise even more. So we are not from Australia. We are from South Africa. And then public education in the States is so bad that many think they could shoot the virus out of existence. <laughs> A good one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, having having lived in the states, I can attest to I can attest to um, public education not being exactly what you would expect. So have a look at this, Justin. So the revenues have basically doubled from twenty, um, yeah, basically middle of twenty twenty up to twenty twenty one, and it has pretty much stayed there. Just a small little dip, you know, in the trailing twelve months. So not much have changed, and that's what we saw in the article as well. Before that, it was pretty much flat for those years. But remember, they still had the outdoor gear that they were actually selling back then as well. And that's what you will see here as well. So it briefly went into negative there. And that's why I said there needs to be a little bit more research done. But from the research I have done, I can see that there has been a spin-off in 2020. So the outdoor stuff is now taken to a new company and they are now focusing solely on the firearms and ammunition. So, so that is something to look into. And then obviously the growth of the gun sales, which is simply, we don't know if it's going to continue growing like it does. But have a look at this return on equity, Justin, 77%. Looking at the return on invested capital, sitting at 56% at the moment, gross margins 42, 24% at the moment, um, operating cash flows going strong, same with free cash flows. Current ratio, well cut lies, sitting at 2.1%. Debt to equity ratio have actually gone down from 2020 to 2021, sitting at 20% now where it usually it was at around 50%. Shares outstanding, pretty much flat. And then on the 10 point, 10 point checklist, they basically, yes, they, they pass everything there. So 10 out of 10 for the fundamentals. Then looking at the analyst ratings, the analysts have three neutral, three, three very bullish, which averages out um, at bullish. 
and then they are predicting a stock price um, target of 32, 32%. So I didn't give my fair price because like I said, I still need to do some more research, but I took the earnings per share that they've currently got and I worked it down on the most bearish case. You know, if you take a 2% growth, slowing down to around 1%, um, and then taking a PE ratio of let's say 10, then this stock is still worth more than it is today. And for that reason, with the positive numbers, we are seeing the spin-off that happened and with them only focusing on what they are really good at, which is the um, firearms ammunition. And with the Democrats bringing in gun control, I think that this stock is pretty much overvalued or undervalued at the moment. So definitely something I'm going to look into in more detail. Davi, human nature never ceases to, to amaze me. You know, Trump, Trump puts a wall up and, and all it does is makes people want to climb over the wall more. You know, people say, so you, <laughs> the Dems say you can't have guns, makes people go and buy more guns. I mean, that's, isn't, isn't that just human nature in a nutshell? People want what they can't have, right? No, nah, exactly. And I think it was Richard Branson that actually said that they should actually take away all the cannabis um, regulations because, it, because of exactly that reason. People want. Yeah, what they well, I mean, it's it's, it's 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 actually very interesting to see that in a lot of places where cannabis is legalized, um, crime has actually gone down and cannabis usage has actually reduced as well. So it's 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 exactly what you're saying. Yeah, yeah I think Richard Branson has a good point there. So, Davi, tomorrow we are back with a dividend stock review, and we're going to be presenting. How many stocks are we doing tomorrow? One or two? Um. I don't have anything yet. I need to do a lot of research. So I'm going to probably wake up at three as well or four and then start doing my research because <laughs> I've got a lot to go through. I've got a few dividend stocks, but none of them really excites me at this point. And a few of them I've already covered on the channel. So I don't want to be going over the same stocks I have gone over. You know? so, so yes, I think let's stick to one each. So tomorrow we're presenting a dividend stock, which we think you should be putting into your portfolio. Of course, if you've been following the channel for any amount of time, you'll know that Darvi and I love our dividend stocks. Me more than Darvi. I'm absolutely insane about dividend stocks. Uh, tw 20 years of investing and uh, dividends have never, ever, ever led me astray. So that's one thing I'm pretty pleased with. So tomorrow we're going to be looking at uh, dividend stocks. And then, of course, on Friday to close out the week, we'll be looking again at our portfolios seeing exactly what's going on, see if those Chinese stocks have improved Darby's portfolio a little bit, see if cryptocurrency has moved my portfolio <laughs> a little bit. And uh, we'll be giving you guys a catch up. And then, of course, a great opportunity for Q&A. So if you guys have got specific questions, uh, remember that on Friday's live stream, you guys can ask your questions, anything, whether it's related to a specific stock, whether it's related to an industry sector or to your own portfolio, you can ask us those questions and we'll gladly answer. And of course, something that is slightly different with Darby and I, if we don't know the answer, we'll say we don't know. And if we do know, we'll give you the answer. And uh, so you can rest assured the information you get from us will always be absolutely honest, truthful and spot on. So guys, thank you for joining us on the live stream and uh, we'll see you same place same time tomorrow see you tomorrow before you go i'd just like to let you know that you can get access to all of our courses absolutely free of charge there's no fees to pay no patrons to join and all you have to do is visit our home page of our website and click on the sign up button link is supplied in the description down below now you'll get access to our stock investing course our real estate investing course as well as some really great courses on managing your personal finances and of course if you're not already subscribed to our channel please consider subscribing when you subscribe and join our money tribe here on youtube you'll get access to daily stock analysis videos, crypto analysis videos, as well as some really great personal finance content. And of course, all you have to do to subscribe is click on the subscribe button below this video. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever we add new content here on YouTube.